Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And in this video, I'll be showing you my desk setup in medical school. I'll be breaking down all the gear that I use. Some are a little bit more expensive, others are quite affordable. And I'll be showing you how I've organized the setup to help me be more productive. Everything that I talk about is written in the description below and I put timestamps so that you can skip to any sections. With all that out of the way, let's get onto the setup. A common question that I get asked is what desk I'm currently using and the thing is is that I received this desk a few years back from an old friend and it was custom built for them at the time so I don't really know what it's called or where you get it from but I really, really like it because it fits into my room quite nicely because it's L-shaped and it's got a really nice white finish and that matches the rest of the items in my room because I have a lot of white furniture but I think it also complements the heavy blacks that a lot of my computer equipment has the mouse, the keyboard, um, so it looks quite nice in that sense. If you're looking for your own desk, the only thing I could suggest is looking into a standing desk because it's always good to get the blood flowing, to get up and down so that you're not ruining your posture. So with mine, I try to get up um, every few hours and move myself around. Like the desk, the computer that I'm using to power the setup was also custom built and you won't be able to see it here because it's underneath the table. It was custom built about three or four years back with a good friend of mine. It's been my workhorse for daily tasks, for medical school, for video editing. I'm using the program DaVinci Resolve and really anything else that's been thrown at it. So because it's getting a little bit old, I might have to update it in the future, but until it causes me major problems, I'll keep using it for now. Now onto the monitors, and the monitors that I'm using are the Samsung 34 inch SJ55W Ultra Wide and the AOC 24 inch G2460 VQ6. And originally I had bought the 34 inch to replace the 24 inch, and my mates and my friends used to tell me that it was ridiculous I'm spending this money on it and it's not really worth upgrading, like you already have a 24 inch. But after doing the upgrade and spending the money, I found it really helpful in terms of having that extra bit of screen real estate. So what I like to do is have a split screen going on, one tab open with say Google and the other with my notes or something that I'm working on. And by being able to switch between them, it's just really helpful. I also like to use the 24 inch to have my Notion tab open and now I'll usually have my pass tracker or my objective list, the things that I'm working on. So in terms of doing assignments and it's in terms of doing like any research projects, it's been really, really useful to have all the information on the screen. It saves that little bit of extra time from tabbing in and tabbing out like what you would have to do on a laptop. So if there's anything that I'd recommend in terms of upgrading your own setup, it would have to be the monitor because at the end of the day, the screen is what we're looking at hours upon hours. So you really want that experience to be enjoyable and you wanna to try to remove as much friction as you can um, in terms of the whole studying process. The chair that I'm using for the setup is not the one that I'm currently sitting on because that would be this little stool. But the chair that I'm normally using is one that I picked up from Aldi for $100 Australian and it was during one of their weekly special buys. So if you don't know, Aldi's like a supermarket chain and every week they sell products like chairs, computers, gardening stuff, and it's relatively affordable compared to a lot of the chairs that you find online for $300, $200. Um, this was only hundred bucks and it's got adjustable armrests, it has lower back support, it even has a headboard that I can lean back, especially when I'm doing longer study sessions. And if you're looking for your own chair, the only thing that I really recommend is getting one with lower back support to support your natural arch so that you're not slouching and ruining your posture over time. So the laptop that I'm using is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 2 and it looks a little bit different to the stock version because I slapped a dbrand skin on it which is why the logo is orange. I like to use it because it has a webcam. I don't have a webcam on top of my monitor. So when it comes to video calls or when it comes to talking with friends, especially during class, when I have to show my face, I'll use my laptop um, for the webcam feature. So another bit of tech that I'm always using is my iPad. And I'm using the iPad Air 3. I got the base model. I think it was the 64 gigabyte version. So it was about $700 Australian. And then when you add the Apple Pencil, it's about 800 and something dollars Australian. So relatively cheap when you compare it to say the iPad Pro. But this has been an absolute game changer. In terms of going digital, which talking about the benefits from going from paper to digital would be another video in itself. It's been absolutely amazing. 
from having stacks and stacks and stacks of notes and folders and having to find everything and getting pages lost, it just compresses it all into one little device. And nowadays I like to annotate my lecture notes, use this as a notebook and also as a sort of a mini computer when you're outside. This has been absolutely fantastic. If you're looking to make your work for a lot more minimal, a lot more in sync, then I'd suggest looking into getting an iPad. You can get the normal iPad for about 500 bucks and the ability to go paperless and to have everything one device is just awesome. The keyboard that I'm using is the Microsoft Designer Keyboard. And normally it comes as a set with the Microsoft Designer Mouse. But after experimenting with the mouse, I found that it just felt awkward in the hand, the buttons were a bit flimsy, and the whole thing was a bit light. Instead, I use it as a wireless mouse with my laptop when I'm studying outside. But coming back to the keyboard, minus the fact that you have to buy it as a set, the Microsoft Designer Keyboard is awesome. It's got a compact design, which means that it doesn't take a lot of space on your desk. I really like how sleek it is. It comes in a nice black finish and I can type really fast on it. I find that the traction and the sound that it makes is really, really pleasant to use. And I think I can reach up to about 80 words per minute, sometimes even 90 words per minute um, when I'm typing. And I'm not a very fast typer, so that's pretty good for me. And the keyboard being wireless is a huge feature because I can move it out of the way when I'm trying to write notes, or I can have it closer to me when I'm feeling a bit more lazy. Wireless is the way to go. And keeping onto this theme of wirelessness, if that's even a word, is the mouse that I'm using, which is the Logitech Master MX2. And I'm not gonna lie, I jumped onto the bandwagon, I saw a bunch of different YouTubers using this mouse, and I thought that I should probably go get it because it's been recommended everywhere on the internet, and the recommendations hold their weight because this is an awesome mouse. It feels really, really nice in your hand. It's got a little bit of weight to it, so then when you're moving it around, it feels like a bit of premium technology, and you can connect it to three different devices and change the device with the ease of using a button. For me, it looks really aesthetic, it's wireless, and it serves its function really well. And the keyboard and mouse upgrade from wired to wireless was huge in terms of keeping the design very minimalistic and ease of use when it comes to everyday tasks. So the headphones that I'm using is the HyperX Cloud Stinger headset. And this was definitely on the cheap side. I think I picked it up for about $60 Australian. And it's a bit of a gaming headset because you've got the mic that comes out and it looks a bit clunky on the head. But really when it comes to sound, I'm not a huge audiophile. I just like to hear the sound, be clear with my mic, and it pretty much does all its functions that I need it to do. And when I'm not using my headset, I listen to lo-fi beats when I'm studying using my speakers. And the speakers that I'm using are the Logitech Z213. And these were on the more affordable side. I think they were less than 100 bucks. And the kit comes with two different speakers and then a subwoofer for a little bit of bass that I put behind my monitor. I've had no issues with them, no static. They connect very well. And the sound is pretty decent for the price that I paid for. Now onto some other things that I use on my desk. The first being a pen holder. And usually I don't write on paper too much, but I do have a little notebook that I write some things in occasionally. And because I've been learning Chinese, I prefer to handwrite the Chinese characters. It feels a little bit more natural. So having a little bit of pens, pencils, convenient location. I think I picked up the pen holder for about $5 and it does the job pretty well. Also from Officeworks, I have the lamp that I'm using, which was about $40 Australian. And it's not the best lamp. I know that there's better ones that you can manipulate like a work lamp and put in different directions. It keeps this little dark spot on my desk a little bit more illuminated and you can change the brightness settings and you can also change if it looks more yellow or if it looks more like white light. So the next item I have doesn't really add anything in terms of productivity or increasing my workflow, but it's the LED light strips that you see on the side of my desk. I really like the nice lighting feel that I have at nighttime when I turn off the room down lights and just put on my LED strip and my Nanoleaf light panels. What's also a cool feature is that you can change the color and the intensity and the brightness through your smartphone. And I have these two buttons here that I can switch off and on, um, which is really, really handy. I picked these up from Aldi for about $30 for a two meter strip and hopefully they don't break down so I won't have to replace them. And finally, although I like to keep the setup relatively minimalistic, I have a few other things that just make the whole workspace a little bit more pleasant and more enjoyable to be in. And first up, I have these little fake plants that I got from Ikea for about $10 for the three of them. Someone told me that adding a little bit of green onto your desk makes you more productive. I might have seen it on a YouTube video, but so far it's a little bit more pleasant. And I also have this little Lee Sin figure. A lot of people in the comments have noticed it. And yes, I did play League. I don't play League of Legends as much now, but back in the day when I was younger, I was really into that game. I played a lot more than I probably should have. Leeson's not my favorite character, Vayne is. So if you play League of Legends and have a favorite character, comment down below. And I also have this little penguin. I think I named him Patrick. And he looks a little bit funny, but I won him at a claw machine. 
I think my girlfriend and I spent like $20 or $25 on claw machines and we finally won. Um, so I have this little penguin as a reminder of that victory. And finally, I have a penguin portrait on my desk that I got as an anniversary gift from my girlfriend and it was custom drawn by Shiba Drawings. So you can find her on Instagram. I'll put her um, on the screen. I like to fill my feed with all these little penguin cartoons and Shiba Drawings does really cute ones. So definitely check her out. Well, that wraps up my desk setup in medical school and I hope it gave you some inspiration to help design your own productive workspace. At the end of the day, it all comes down to creating a workspace that you enjoy being in, organizing it to best fit how you learn and removing the friction to just getting started. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I have plenty of videos like this one on my channel about study approaches, medical school and the like. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, this was Sebastian, stay sharp. Let them pull the strings that trigger what you say. I think it's difficult to get out on my brain I wish life weren't any other way But it's all so